So you're not picking up this, are you? And you, I'm trying no, to stay really still. Oh, okay, cool. No, I'll just keep doing it. Right? Yeah, now you're gonna start doing it. Right? <laughs> Shit! That's intense. <laughs> who am I? Oh, oh, I'm freaking out now. I am. No, I am. I know who I am. I am Catelyn Moran, author. I am the author of, let me see if I can test my memory here, The Chronicles of Narmo, 1991, How to Be a Woman, 2011, Moranthology, 2012, How to Build a Girl, 2013, Moranifesto, 2014, How to Be Famous, to, oh no, I've missed out some years. Anyway, I've written a lot, and the new one's How to Be Famous, that's the important thing. I am primarily known for making it slightly easier for women to say the word vagina. I, having normalised use of the word vagina, I'd like to move on to use of the word bumhole maybe. I mean, I've got very, very small ambitions. I just like saying dirty words and pretending it's a political movement. If you only read one chapter from How To Be Famous, I would recommend the penultimate chapter, which is just straight out pornography. I wrote it because I don't think there are enough cheerful, funny, lovely, sexy uh, depictions of sex, particularly for young women to read. I think generally young women tend to learn about pornography by having a horrible boy on a bus go, oh, look at this, and showing them something horrible from the internet. And so I wanted to write some lovely sex and I did it for you. Do I prefer fiction or non-fiction? I mean, like, what is the truth, right? Like, you know, what is fiction? What is non-fiction? We're all just telling stories, right? Non-fiction, I like facts. If I could only read one book for the rest of my life, I'd like to say it was Moby Dick, because that is chunky and that would last me a while and it is brilliant, but ultimately I would have to land on the side of lols and it would be The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole, which I consider to be the most perfect book ever written. Don't know, I can't, oh God. Um, ah. A piece of writing that changed my life. I think it would have to be the dictionary. Uh, I was a child who was home educated and uh, we didn't have a television for quite a long time and so I just sat and read the dictionary. And in a way, if you've read the dictionary, you've read every book ever because it's got all the words in it. The best piece of advice I've ever been given, other than Courtney Love screaming, don't eat cheese at me, was uh, my friend Matt, who when I was 16 and just starting to leave the house for the first time and go to nightclubs and hang out with grown-ups and have a job as a writer, sat me down and went, I'm going to tell you the most important information you're ever going to have in your life. Don't be a dick. And it's amazing how simply and clearly you need to be told that at a young age. It's words to live by. Don't be a dick. <laughs> oh. The worst piece of advice I've ever been given was a hairdresser on the Holloway Road in 2003 who said to me, you have exactly the right shape to have a sharp black bob like that of the band The Cause. I did not have the right shape face for a sharp black bob like one of The Cause. I cried for four days and then I bought a hat. I often think about firebombing that hairdresser. She was a cruel lady. God damn you, Brenda, God damn you. See, I misheard that as you saying what was the last gif you gave someone and, and it was one of a cat falling off a table. Uh, so that, that's the last gif I gave someone. It was a really funny fat cat falling off a table. It's great. What was the last gif you received? <laughs> <laughs> the last gif I received was of the classic one of Kermit typing going, which is basically me every day. That is my job. Kermit on the typewriter, but with bigger hair. If I was an animal, I can show you what animal I would be. It is this dog here. Look at it. My sister, this is my dog Luna. It's a fluffy idiot. And I love it for being a fluffy idiot. And I will say things to it like, look at you with your little furry bum. All you want to do is have your tummy rubbed. And my sister looked at me one day and went, you do know every time you say something about the dog, it sounds like you're saying it about yourself. And it's absolutely true. I'm just a big furry bummed idiot that wants to be tickled on the tummy. This is me. This is my spirit animal. I bought it. It's called Luna. I write book now, <laughs> I go on tour, I like feminism. <laughs> My teenage years are more than 100% reflected in the character of Johanna Morgan. That is, we have to pretend it's fiction, but these are, these are basically my diaries uh, that I've turned into novels. Uh, basically anybody who isn't literally bending over and going, take my vote to the patriarchy. If you vote, if you want to have a job, if you want to keep your own money, if you believe that being raped when you're married, it should be, it is a crime. If you want to have custody of your children, if you want an education, if you want to be free, if you want to live your life as you wish, you are a feminist. You have lived a feminist life and you've only been able to do that because other people who call themselves feminists came before you and fought for that right. 
love your feminist aunts and grandmothers. They made your life amazing.